how to convert any 2D image into a 3D textured mesh without modeling it in Blender. So the first step is going to be to delete all the objects that we got in the scene. So we can press A to grab them all and we can press X to delete the selected objects. So next I'd like to be facing the front of the graphics. So we can press 1 to jump here to the front. And after that, we can simply drag and drop our reference image and put it right at the center. We can align it a little bit. So I'm going to just use the move tool and we can move it up just a bit here. So next I'd like to convert our image into a grease pencil. So let's select it and we can do right click using the mouse and the third settings is going to be this trace image to grease pencil. So I want you to click on it and you can just click on OK. So on the bottom here, we're going to be having this tab. I want you to expand it. So now we can adjust these values and you can see how they will interact with our logo. So first we have the thickness. So for the thickness, it's going to be how thick those edge lines. So for example, we can increase that up. So in my case, I'm going to just reduce it all the way down to just one. I don't want to have any thickness in my logo. For the resolution, you need to be careful with this value because if you increase it, you might have some lagging on you might experience some lagging on your computer. So I'm going to just go with three I can just reduce the resolution back to three. And for this color threshold, so this is the most important feature here. So basically, this is how Blender will separate the colors in your logo when tracing it. So in my case, 0.2 here works best for achieving a clean and accurate lines. So feel free to adjust this value to get the best results for your specific logo. So the next step is going to be to convert this grease pencil into an actual path. So let me just select it from here. And I'd like to just drag it to the right side so that we can operate on it separately. So next we can jump to the edit mode. We can press tab to switch the edit mode. And I want you to select only the main edges. So we can press L to select these lines, the main lines in our logo. If you select one by mistake, we can revert back by pressing Ctrl Z. And let's select these. We can keep pressing L to select the entire units. And once we have everything selected, we need to reverse the selection. So we can press Ctrl I, so I as inverse to reverse the selection. And we can press X and let's delete those points. So now we cleaned up those residues. So by the way, if you are completely new to Blender, I definitely recommend checking out our free getting started with Blender tutorial series for absolute beginners. The link's gonna be down below. So next we have to convert this G pencil into an actual curve. So here we can go back from the edit mode to the object mode and we can click on object, convert into an actual path. So now it's a path, this trace that we got here. So I'm gonna just move it to the right side here. We can also reset the center origin. So you can go to object, set origin, origin to geometry so that we can grab it easily from the middle. So next we need to optimize also this curve so we can jump here to this object data properties. Let me just expand it a little bit and we can reduce this resolution. We're not gonna need it. Let me just show you. So if we cut it down all the way to one, we're not gonna be seeing much of a difference. So I'm gonna just keep it at one. So the next step is gonna be to convert our curve into an actual mesh so that we can fix these imperfections that we got here. So we can again go to object, convert into an actual mesh. So now it's a mesh. We can press tab to switch the edit mode and we got these vertices. So first we can press A to select everything, all the vertices, and we can press M and let's merge by distance. So as you can see, four vertices are removed. We can decrease this value. I'm gonna just get rid of this zero. Actually, we're gonna be increasing it up. So you removed 15, what about 0 0.01? So we need to be careful here to not lose the details. So 300 vertices are removed, which is great. So if we increase that up, you're going to be messing up the geometry. So if we increase it to 0.05, it's going to be start losing some main details. And we don't want that. So let me just here revert back to just 0.01. It's going to be great. So now it's time to do some manual cleanup. So for example, here at, let me just find a way. For example, this one, we can just get rid of this vertex. We can press X and let's dissolve that vertex to keep that perfect edge line. For example, this one right here, we can bevel it. So we can press Control, Shift and B to bevel. We can bevel it like this and we can scroll the mouse to insert more edge loops. So now as you can see, we got a perfect edge line here, curvy edge line. Here at the top, what we can do, we can select this vertex. It's like this one. We can press F to fill this gap and we can get rid of this edge. Press X and del delete that face, that edge. 
this one here we can just take it a little bit to the right side so for example here we have a mass so on the, in this mode we can delete we can press x delete those vertices same thing here we can select these two press f to fill and we can delete this extra edge on the middle so let me just find some other parts to improve we can switch here to the vertex mode so that we can see that better for example here i'm going to be selecting all these vertices we can press m and merge at the center so this way we're going to be having only one vertex let's do the same thing here press m merge at the center same thing here. i'm going to select this entire part press m merge at the center so basically keep doing this for all those unwanted vertices so press m merge at the center here same thing here merge at the center so basically the more time you spend improving or cleaning up the shape the better the results will be So once we finish the manual cleanup, we can also use the smooth modifier to straighten up these edges if you have some wobble in here. So with this mesh selected, we can go to the modifiers and we can search for the smooth smooth modifier, this one right here. So this one's gonna be smoothing this shape, but we need to be careful with the entire shape. So let me just increase that up, but we need to keep an eye on the shape. So I think around 75, it's gonna be great. So let's go ahead and apply the smooth modifier. So now we need to fill these faces so we can press tab to switch to edit mode. I'd like to press A to grab everything and we can deselect the edge line. So you can press shift and L to deselect the edge like this and we can press F to fill all those faces. So for the eye that we got here, we need to use the boolean modifier so that we can cut through the shape of our mesh that we got here. So what we can do, I'm gonna press Alt A to deselect everything. I'd like to select the eye this border that we got here the eye socket and the eyebrows and after that i'd like to extrude them you can press e to extrude like this and next i'd like to select them all by pressing l let's select the entire units here and i'd like to push them inside so i'd like to push them inside our mesh like this so next we can separate them so we can press b separate selection so let me just go back to the object mode and i'd like to select my mesh this mesh that we got here and i'd like to add search for the boolean modifier here modifier is going to be the boolean modifier so for the type i'm going to keep it as default which is the difference and for the object we can just just use this eyedropper and i'd like to pick this object that we separated from the mesh so now if we apply the boolean and if we select this object and if we just hide it let me just select the mesh if we switch to the edit mode we can be able to select this face these faces and we can delete them we can press x and delete those faces so let's go back to objects and there we go we got the eye of the lion so now i'd like to give our logo some thickness so let's select the logo and we can go again to the modifiers i'd like to search for the solidify modifier so let's increase the thickness that we got here so we can just increase it up i think something around 0 0.15 is gonna be accurate it's gonna be fine in my case but here we have a problem so some faces are extruded on the right side and some are extruded on the on the right side right side left side so what we can do to fix this problem let me just hide the solidify modifier for now we can check the face orientation so here on the overlays so i want you to check this face orientation so you can see the problem that we got here so some faces are red and some are blue so we need to make a constant or a main color so whether we can choose the red or the blue so in my case we can go with the blue so let me select my mesh here we can jump again to the edit mode by pressing tab or switch manual from here we can select the faces that are red here this one here let's make sure that we are not missing anything and we can press shift n shift n to flip the normals and here i want you to click on inside so now they are all blue let me check no this one here is not blue so let's select them all both shift n again to flip the normals so now everything is blue so we can bring back the solidify and we won't can have any problem with the extrusion so here let me just go back to the overlay we can just remove that face orientation and to see things better we can switch the viewport display to matte cap and for the type i'd like to use this studio light there we go so we got our logo 
So to fix this problem here, we can do right click in Shade Auto Smooth to smooth out those edges. So now it's time to texture our logo. So if you press Z, so to the material preview, our logo has no material. So what we can do on the right side, we can click here on this plus and drag to the right side. Again, I'd like to click again and drag vertically like this. So the top is going to be for the UV map, the UV editor, and the bottom is going to be for the shader editor. You can press N to hide that panel. So with this one selected, we can add the new material. So we can scroll up here and we can add the new material. So let's call it logo. And we can zoom in here. And what I'd like to do, I'd like to drag our reference image, our 2D image here. So we can drag it and paste it here. And I'd like to connect the color to the base color. And we can choose the same image that we got here in the UV map. So let's click here and choose this line logo. All right, so next step, we have to set the UV mapping. So we can press one again to be facing the front. We can press tab to switch to edit mode. We can press A to select everything. And we can press U and click on this project from view. So now we got the UVs. So all you have to do is just align the UVs with this image texture. So I'd like to expand our image so we can press control space to maximize this window and let's zoom in. So the best way that I found is you can choose any point that you like. Let me just show you a way. So for example, I'm going to be choosing this point here. Let's put it at the exact location, which is around here. So I'm going to select this point, press shift S, cursor to select it. And after that, we can switch the pivot point to this point here, to the cursor. So here the pivot point, we can click and search for the 2D cursor. And after that, we can select all the points and you can try S to scale them up like this. And it's going to be perfectly scaling up to fit the shape of our logo. So now let's go back. We can press control space and let's go back. And as you can see, we got our logo textured here. So we can apply some final tweakings to our material to make it look better. So here in the shader editor, we can start by the metallic. We can give it some metallic touch and just increase this value up to, let's say, 0.4. And for the roughness, I'd like to make it reflective. So what we can do, we can reduce the roughness down to something like 0.2. And as you can see, the surface is completely smooth. So what we can do, we can give our logo some, some bumps. So what we can do here, let me just expand this panel here, control space to maximize it. Gonna take this node back. We can add the bump node. So shift A, let's search for bump node. And we can connect this image reference the color to the height and the normal to the normal. We can press control space to go back to check our logo. So as you can see, the strength is really huge. So what we can do, we can reduce the strength down to something like 0 0.05. So now we got some bumps on the surface. And there you have it. Your 2D image is now an amazing 3D model in Blender. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching and I hope to see you in future projects. Take care.